Hi guys, this is Alex from Brightfield Studios. I am back on YouTube and I'm ready to share with you some of my key findings that I have made while working on Drone, my submission to the GMTK 2020 Game Jam. So what I've basically done is over the last about four weeks or so, while I've been working, I have learned a lot. And about yesterday, I sat down and I decided to write up all the things I learned and I thought it would be a great way for me to sort of cement that learning while at the same time share with you guys what I've learned um, all the things that I think are worth taking with me uh, into my next project. So we're going to go through those in the next few videos that I'll be posting here on YouTube. Um, and if you find it interesting and you want to keep up with me, I highly recommend that you join me on Twitch while I stream live while I work. Um, the raw footage, <laughs> the pains and the struggles and also the, the great wins. Uh, I stream on Tuesdays, Wednesdays and Sundays on Twitch. You should check me out in the link below. Uh, or just stay here and get the highlights of what I've learned here on YouTube. So with that in mind, let's get started and jump in on what we're going to look at today. So today, um, here is an overview of my agenda of the things that I have learned that I want to share with you in the next videos. We're going to be learning how to port to Android. We will be learning, um, looking at an example of a proper game architecture. And this is by no means the architecture that is the best architecture, but it's, it's an example of trying to get you to understand how the game architecture is important and how you can think about it in a, in a good way. Then we'll be looking at player preps and storing settings. And here is where you would be putting things like how far, uh, you know, what kind of difficulty settings your player wants uh, and understanding how you can store that uh, using the Unity player preps. Then we'll be looking at touchscreen control, uh, sorry, touchscreen controls, which is obviously uh, connected to the fact that we'll be working on Android. Uh, we will also be looking at how I learned how to animate the drone, which um, is not necessarily, um, it's a little bit of a different way of, it's not necessarily a different way of doing it, but because it's a, not a human shaped object, um, it, it gets a little bit interesting looking at how to animate those. Then we're gonna look into optimizing the game. Like I said, this is for a, platform, uh, for a mobile device. And finally, I have a fun uh, episode on music, sounds, mixers, and audio managers. Uh, in particular, I also rigged up what I ca called a drone response system, which is basically an audio manager on the drone that made him respond whenever he got his own um, inputs. So if you find any of these interesting, make sure to like and subscribe so you can make sure to know, be notified when these videos come out. Uh, and also, um, if you do enjoy the content, please also comment give some constructive criticism on what I can focus on next. And, and if you agree with things or disagree with things, that'd also be, be great to hear what you have to say. So let's start by looking at how we port to Android. Uh, when porting to Android, there's a set of steps that we need to go through to make sure that everything works. Uh, but after those steps are done, you actually run everything, um, you build your game in the same way as you would build uh, a normal Unity game on your computer. So uh, this tutorial basically assumes you know how to do that. If you don't, then you should probably go check that out. Just do a quick search or uh, uh, figure it out. But today we're gonna look at the six, the six steps that are needed to port to Android. That being said, uh, this will work, or most of the steps here I assume will work for iPhone as well. However, to be able to do it on iPhone, it's, um, or uh, to be able to uh, push to the iPhone market, the Play Store, no, the um, App Store, uh, it qu requires a lot more work. And so for me, who first of all has an Android, but also would like to just be able to put this out on the Play Store and get over with it, uh, I've only learned how to do this on the Android, so that's why we're doing it that way. First of all, we're gonna learn how to install the SDK uh, and how to hook that up to Unity through the preferences. Then we're gonna make sure that our um, uh, USB drivers are set so that it can actually get this game over to your Android device. Then we're going to learn how to switch to an Android build um, before we also make sure that our phone can receive this stuff 
uh, the game by sending it into developer mode. And then finally, we're going to look in on the player under project settings to learn how to set the game settings there. Among other things, it will be locking the game in landscape mode for my case example, because the game is in landscape mode. But of course, if you have some sort of Flappy Bird clone, you may want to lock it in portrait mode. As a bonus, we'll also be looking at Unity Remote, which is a way of quickly testing your, um, your game without having to build it over to your mobile phone. So that's very useful as well. All right, with that in mind, let's get, in, let's get started. So we'll start by looking at installing the SDK. And to do that, we will bring up the Unity Hub. So the Unity Hub is, of course, the, the program that you boot up before you actually start your Unity uh, project. And uh, when, when you're on the Unity Hub, you just go under Installs, you choose the, the version of Unity that you have, go under Add Modules, find the Android build support, and make sure that all these three are installed and ticked off here. Once you've done that, there should be uh, a small Android logo on the underside of your Unity version. If not, you may have to restart. Try restarting the hub or Unity or uh, the computer. But basically, this should be there. It should say Android build support enabled. Once you have done that, we can then go into preferences and make sure that we are actually using those SDKs. So to do that, we will hop on over into Unity and I will then go um, under, um, let's see here, we will be going into our edit and we'll be going into preferences and under preferences, we will select external tools and scrolling down, you will see Android popping up here and you want to make sure that these are all ticked off. So if they're not, you will have a small yellow <coughs> triangle telling you that you should use the recommended SDK tools. Um, by ticking this off, you will ensure that it will use the ones that are installed with Unity. I'm assuming the reason you can choose otherwise is if you are using other SDK paths, maybe if you have Android Studios, I also have Android Studios, and you may have saved your SDKs in a different directory. So you can actually browse and find those directory there, the directories there. But having installed it via Unity, uh, you can basically just tick off all these boxes and the only thing um, that, that all of the warnings will disappear. So that's done. Next up, we wanna make sure that the Google USB driver is set. The quickest way to do that is using the free software Android Studios. Uh, and Android Studios is an IDE for developing Android apps, among other things. Uh, so I've used it just to mess around with some um, apps of mine. Uh, but it's also a great way, <laughs> it's, it shows, to be able to set, make sure that this driver is up and running. So after having booted up Android Studios, I go under Configure and I go to my SDK Manager. And here under the settings, under the Android SDK, I can go to SDK Tools and here is the Google USB driver. So if this is not installed, it will say not installed like I have on this licensing library here. Uh, and once you take it off, you'll be able to install it. Let's see if I go like this, you'll get this icon and you can press apply and it will install it. I'm not gonna do that for play services, ah, go away. And um, make sure that it is installed. You may again have to restart your computer to make sure that this takes effect on your computer. Let's close that. So we have now installed the SDK, we have connected that to Unity, we have ensured that the USB driver is up and running. Next is we want to switch to the Android build. Back in Unity, if we go to our, our edit, sorry, uh, file build settings, this is basically, as you probably know, where you set up the different scenes for your build that you are going to bring, include in your build, and you'll also be able to select the platform that you'll be using. Here we have already switched to Android, but basically um, if I were to switch the other way, you can see you select an, uh, the Android file and you would just press switch platform. It will take some time. You'll see the Unity cube hops down to Android and, and you can now uh, build to Android. With that done, we will now go on to the fifth step, which is looking at um, the, ensuring that developer mode is enabled on your Android phone. So if I bring in my phone here, how, uh, the way you do that is you actually go into your settings 
and you go all the way down to about phone and on the about phone you press software information and then you will click seven times on the build number there so it's now it's currently at the top right now it says build number if I press on it seven times it will enable developer mode I already have it on so you can see the warning coming up that it's already been turned on but you press that seven times and it will give you a prompt to install your um, uh, to enable developer mode and once you've done that you should be able to see it also at the bottom here developer options make sure that it is set to on uh, and also uh, you want to set USB debugging to on uh, that way you will be able to debug as the USB is connected so that's sort of why we have the developer mode on as well uh, so that you can develop those games and debug to make sure that the game is running correctly on US on your phone all right finally step six it's the project settings and we want to turn off portrait mode so, you know, obviously this is not a mandatory thing to do, but it's just interesting to know where to find things because, you know, okay, we found we've been on the hub to do one thing. We've been in the build settings to do one thing. We've been in the project settings to do one thing and now, and then the preferences to do the final thing. <laughs> so it's just great to know where all these things are. So I've just gone into my project settings. I like to keep it here in my Docker. Uh, and if we go down to the player, uh, you can see here, this is where you actually set the different player settings depending on your platform. If we go to the Android one here, this is where you would set the Android icon for your apps. Um, you will also be able to set your resolution and this is where you will set first of all full screen, uh, but also um, this is where you're allow you allow different orientations for your auto or orientation. So I usually just set this to auto or orientation and then I select landscape left and right because people have preferences on that. But you can also just lock it to one of the two. Um, but I've decided to leave that up to the player. But I've un unticked the portrait modes to ensure that it will never be in portrait mode. Please remember that the um, resolution and dimensions for an Android phone varies with the, the, the version you have along with, of course, iPhone has a different uh, dimension and your computer has a different dimension. So to get the best effect while you're just testing it on your PC, um, make sure that you select the dimensions that are correct for your phone. Um, just to show what would happen if I put it in portrait mode, you can see I obviously have dynamic UIs, so they scale, but they, they, don't, they can't handle this hardcore <laughs> dimension changes. So, um, you should uh, consider what kind of dimensions you'll be using for your game. And obviously you can test still in Unity. So I do a lot of my testing here and then I port or build onto my phone to make sure that it works there as well. Uh, so that's that on dimensions and preferences. Of course, remember there are other settings as well. You can look at the splash, uh, splash image. You can look at other settings. Um, there's lots of stuff here. For example, what kind of APIs that are required to be able to run your game. This has to do with, you know, the lower the Android version you allow, then the less features and support that version has. But at the same time, the higher you put the minimum requirement, then you are excluding people who have phones that can't run the newest version of Android. So that's a balance you wanna make sure with regards to how big a market you want to be able to approach. All right. So that should be it. You have basically done what you need to do to be able to um, port your game to Android. Basically, all you have to do now is you go to file, you go to build settings and you select build and you'll then be able to select uh, where you want to store your build on your computer. But it will at the same time also create the game on your phone. Um, and if we just hop on in here, I pull this over um, you should be able to see that I actually can have drone here on the bottom right and it should boot up just fine hopefully of course this will I'm, this is actually the first time I'm doing this so this will be interesting how will this game look on uh, the phone when it sets on my phone it's in there you go yeah so there you have the game 
uh, it works just fine and you can um, play through the game like so. So that's super cool. All right guys, that is that on um, setting up the phone so that, no, sorry, setting up everything to be able to port to Android. As an added little side note, I want to introduce you to Unity Remote. Now, Unity Remote requires you to have a USB connection. And basically what you do is you install uh, Unity on your, uh, you install, uh, let's go here and quit. Basically, it's an app called Unity Remote that you install via App Store uh, or Play Store. And once you have that installed on Unity, uh, no, sorry, on your phone, you plug your phone in to your computer via USB. You go also into your, uh, let's see here, it's in your player settings, I believe. Let's look at the player settings. And then we go to the editor. And under editor, you'll find Unity Remote. And here you make sure that you have any Android device selected. And by then plugging your, um, your game, your phone into your computer and running it here on Unity, you will actually be able to run a very light version of the game on your phone. So just to be, sh uh, be clear, what Unity Remote does is it runs the game on your computer and then renders that and sends that as a low resolution image onto your phone. So it's very lightweight and useful to quickly test how things will work on your phone. But remember that everything from graphics um, will be mostly graphics, but maybe audio as well. Like everything is reduced in resolution and in quality uh, because it's supposed to quickly be able to just test it on your phone. So uh, if you really want to make sure that everything is working, you will have to still build the game onto your phone. Uh, but it's a great way of just, you know, testing, do the controls work? How does this look dimension wise and things like that? So it's very useful to just quickly and iteratively test. Uh, with that done, I think we have blown through everything that we have want to talk about on Unity Remote. And that me wraps everything up for porting to Android. I hope this was very interesting. Next time, I'm not really sure which video you'll be seeing next, uh, but we'll be looking at these other areas. And so be sure to like and subscribe and keep up to date as I will be releasing these videos in short term time ahead. All right, guys, later.